What if I told you that this is an AI? The 1960s were a crazy time between war, civil rights, space, and surprisingly, AI. The Dartmouth Conference held in Hanover, New Hampshire is what many consider to be the birthplace of AI. The parents, John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky. It was here that scientists pondered over the ideas of neural networks, machine learning, and artificial creativity. Kids growing up at this time didn't have the luxury of video games, and they had to do other activities such as pair-to-pair -pair communication or S-ports. However, for the particularly introverted kids, there was company. Meet Dr. Nim. Created by ESR in the mid-1960s, Dr. Nim is a plastic computer which can play the game Nim. Its origins trace back to China where it's also known as Cyan Si or Picking Stones. Nim is a two-player strategy game where you and your friends take turns removing rocks from the pile until someone grabs the last one and wins. Mathematicians have become obsessed with this game and its variants, as they try to prove intellectual dominance by ruining the fun of games for all. And now, you can too! Let's play an example of Nim, where there are four objects and we can take a maximum of three at a time. I'll go first. As you can see, whether I take one, two, or three, I will always lose by you taking the complement three, two, or one. Okay, now let's add another object and make it a total of five. In this case, I can win the game by taking one and then ending my turn. This now flips the tides to you, and similar to our previous game, there is no way you can win when starting with four. Knowing this, that means if I can make you always land on a factor of four, I can guarantee a win by taking the complement of your moves. And voila! Now you too can always win at the game of Nim. But be wary, cause a new challenger approaches. Alright, um, we're going to be trying something new today. Um, this is all being filmed on my phone, so if there's any like, audio issues, um, sorry about that in advance. So, yes, this is Dr. Nim. Um, currently it is set to be where anyone can win, as that is seen with this new game. Uh, so, let me demonstrate how this works. Uh, there's this lever right here, which indicates whether it's the player's turn or Dr. Nim's turn. Um, as well as there's this little new game panel, which in some board configurations helps make it to be where um, you have a fair chance at winning. This trigger right here will set off one of the balls, so I'll click it to take my first turn. And once when I'm done, I can indicate that by moving the lever over and clicking the trigger. All right, so, Dr. Nim made its move, and I am going to take two. And I will set it back to Nim, who takes one. All right, I will take one this time. And I will send it back and let Dr. Nim go. Oh, and this time he took two, and there's four left. Oh, no. All right, well, let's take one and hope that uh, he goes easy on us. All right, let's see what Dr. Nim does. Okay, well, I lost that one. So yeah, let's dive into it a little bit more. So I'm gonna reset this board. Okay, cool, so the board's reset, um, but what you might notice is now that this lever is facing this way. So what this means is that Dr. Nim is always going to take the complement of my moves. So let's follow this first ball as it goes down. Okay, now let's look at the levers. I'm gonna set it over to Dr. Nim's turn, 
And we know that this is going to go three times because it's a complement of one. So ideally it should go this way, trigger something, this way, trigger something, and then on the third, knock the panel out. And that's exactly what we see. So now we know the following. We know that when we're in this configuration, that Dr. Nim will take three balls. Okay, well let me now take two. And now I'm gonna set it to Nim's turn and we know that he's gonna take two balls because we've seen this pattern before. This is just the second step in our steps of three. Okay, awesome. And now lastly, I'm going to take three. And this one's kind of a no-brainer. We know that Dr. Nim's gonna take one because there is a one. So we understand now that when this lever is down, Dr. Nim's always gonna take the complement of our moves. And not only that, we understand that this panel right here indicates that Nim's gonna take three. This panel right here indicates that Nim's gonna take two. And this panel right here indicates that Nim's gonna take one. Now, if you were perceptive, you might realize that, what about this configuration? Dr. Nim hasn't been on a turn where it is face up and he's now prompted to take there. Well, let's see. Okay, I've reset the board, and as you can see, I've set it into the case where I can potentially win. So, I'm going to make my turn, and I'll end it right there and send it back to Nim. We can predict that Nim should take three, because we've seen this step before, and we see that when this panel's up, he's supposed to take three. However, oh no, Nim made a mistake and took one. Now, if I take the complement of R2, which would be another two, so one, two, we're at now this state that Dr. Nim hasn't been in before, and that's where this panel's up. So, let's guess what's gonna happen. Well, the ball's gonna roll down, it's gonna fall, and then it's gonna knock it over to my turn. And that's exactly what happened. So, in order to win, we're going to need to take three. And all of a sudden, Nim is now in that situation where there's only four left. Setting it back to Nim. And now we can win the game by taking three. All right. <laughs> if you won your own copy of Dr. Nim, I was able to 3D print the scaled down version that I showed you all using the STL's collection which was made publicly available on Instructables. Link will be in the comments and descriptions below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Till next time, y'all.